Welcome to the St. Albert Parenting Video Series. As you go through the content, you will notice that these were all filmed during the height of the pandemic, where we were adhering to strict protocols, such as wearing masks. Although we are returning to normal, the content of these videos is still very relevant. And if you're looking for some parenting suggestions across a wide variety of issues, you have come to the right place. Children are experiencing similar emotions to adults when it comes to the pandemic. And much the way that it's impacting adults, it's affecting children's ability to cope. They're having more meltdowns. Things that seem relatively simple or no big deal is causing children to reel out of frustration. Parents can help their children to cope more effectively by fostering resiliency skills by giving them adequate ways of expressing themselves. This may help to alleviate future meltdowns. Here are five ways in which you can help your child to cope when things get really difficult. Welcome to Five in Five. Whether they intend to or not, adults teach children how to act and react to their world from a very early age. Poor emotional regulation can result in increased physical complaints such as headaches, stomach aches, overeating, food withdrawals, and changes in sleep habits. Self-compassion is the art of teaching children how to accept and navigate through mistakes and difficult feelings. Parents need to find a way to release their own emotions and remain calm. It's about striking a balance between being realistic and honest, telling the child that it is okay to feel worried and showing how to let things go. Continuing to love ourselves through mistakes and experiences we may not be proud of promotes our own well-being as well as our children's. In times of distress, our words matter. It can be very tempting to scream back at our screaming child, but rarely do we say anything positive about them or about ourselves when emotions run high. We set the tone for how our kids react to stress and frustration by how we react to difficult situations ourselves. The labeling of emotions activates the readiness potential in our brains. It starts to help us set goals, have conversations we need to have, to ask for the help that we need in a way that is accurate and focused on the issue at hand. Once we say the emotion, we are experiencing out loud. It takes the reactive power away and gives you a moment to realize how you are responding and reduce the emotional charge of the situation. Using specific phrases such as, I'm frustrated right now, or I'm angry and I need to take a break, can help us model good decisions. Adults and children whose feelings do not dictate their behavior are better equipped to be compassionate to others and themselves. So labeling emotions is fundamental to our ability to thrive effectively. Find opportunities for the child to develop a sense of mastery, whether in sport, or the arts, or at school. Any experience that promotes healthy self-esteem will provide them with transferable skills, tools for dealing with more difficult situations. It also counterbalances the stress. Throwing yourself into an activity and gradually pursuing concrete, tangible progress is good for your brain. Many people discovered this firsthand during the beginning of the pandemic as they took up gardening, baking, and exercise. What all these activities share is they afford the person doing them a path toward improvement. Through mastery, children gain self-reliance and self-confidence. They learn how to pay deep and full attention, which in and of itself is good for mental health. 
They can connect to others and belong in a community of like-minded people, even if those connections are not physical. They can be forged through books, films, exhibitions, and countless other ways that knowledge and traditions are shared. One study found that adolescent self-mastery, together with positive relations with significant others, helps them become resilient and cope with life challenges more effectively. Redirect misbehavior. Sometimes children misbehave because they are bored or don't know any better. Find something else for them to do. Notice good behavior and point it out, praising success and good tries. When your child does have a meltdown or an outburst, praise what they did to help themselves to self-regulate instead of concentrating on their loss of control. If they are having trouble self-regulating, help them to deep breathe and give themselves permission to feel their emotions, to sit in their discomfort. Talk afterward about how they can express themselves in more appropriate ways next time. Give clear expectations, particularly with older children. Validate their experience. Strive to understand where their frustration is coming from and help them to problem solve. Several studies have found that celebrating brings significant benefits, including improved physical health and better coping strategies. People who take time to reflect on and celebrate their successes are generally more optimistic, take better care of themselves, and tend to be less stressed. Celebrations increase people's sense of well-being. One encouraging activity is going around the dinner table where everyone gets an opportunity to share what went well for them that day, what did they accomplish, or what gave them joy. Once a week, do a little something special to mark a family member's celebration by cooking their favorite meal, blowing up balloons, or having a treat you don't usually indulge in. When we enhance positive experiences, it increases the feeling of self-worth and overall life satisfaction by expanding people's thoughts and behaviors, promoting creativity, social connection, personal resources, and resilience. Parents should watch for and question reoccurring behaviors like isolation, poor appetite, sleep disturbance, not getting along with their peers, reoccurring misbehavior as something more serious going on and should seek professional help.